role of the Port of London Authority in the Queen's Diamond Jubilee River Pageant in 2012 took two years to plan. The event was watched by an estimated 3 billion people from around the world. It was the biggest spectacle ever to have been held on the River Thames. A thousand boats decked out in all their finery. This unprecedented challenge to deliver a safe event tested everyone to their limits, from the inception right through to the day itself. I've been on the river 23 years and never seen anything as big as this. I'm a pilot. I drive ships. I've never done this before. So, yes, I'm nervous. Nearly every vessel that we have will be on duty or at immediate standby. You can't ask people to continuously work and work and work and work. They have pulled it out of the bag. If it's pouring with rain, that is not, going to, that is not good. Nevertheless, it's not going to stop the, the pageant. What we are concerned about is wind. Whatever happens, they're going to get um, condemned in some shape or form. They're not going to satisfy everybody, um, and it's always going to come back on, on, on the PLA. I've been here 15 years now, and I haven't come across a challenge so big as this one in particular. From the very, very first meeting, the Port of London Authority in really embraced the idea. As the pageant has grown and it has uh, filled out, that they've, they've stayed with it and they've, they've, they've provided I think everything that they can uh, has been thrown has been thrown at the event, and it kind of needs it. But I think without an organisation that was prepared uh, to take that initiative and really grasp the event, uh, it would have foundered very, very early on. The Port of London is the second largest port in Britain. It covers 95 miles of tidal Thames, home to rowers, commuters and container ships. The PLA's main job is to ensure everyone can get about safely on the water for business or pleasure. But almost two years ago, the PLA was approached with a unique request to help stage the largest event the River Thames had ever seen. This is a completely unprecedented event and um, to actually try and move a flotilla of up to a thousand boats down the river um, is a unique challenge in itself. Like many, many people, I was glued to my television last year watching the Royal Wedding and I was intrigued watching the Mall as the commentator explained how complicated the planning was. And I thought to myself, they've got it easy. The Mall is not moving along at up to four or five miles an hour. It's not even moving up and down by over 20 feet two times a day. And it is this that makes the event truly unique. And with that, the PLA swung into action to organise a royal event on a scale never before witnessed on the water. There was no master plan for this. Because it's such an unprecedented event, we couldn't just use our normal standard Harbour Masters general instructions operational order that we'd normally issue to any other event. One of the guys that have been working on our working groups was an ex-police officer and um, he lent me his copy of the Charles and Diana operational order from the police and it actually opened my eyes up to see actually we need to include about catering, how do we actually look after our staff on the day um, and equally what the police's involvement is. All of these aspects are not normally in our operational orders so over the last two years I've been combining all that information into one document. For the River and the Port of London Authority, it is a completely unique and first document of its kind. In 1953, just six weeks after her coronation, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II took part in a stunning Royal River pageant. Organised by the Lord Mayor and overseen by the Port of London Authority, it featured 150 vessels. The Royal River pageant for the Queen's Diamond Jubilee in 2012 will feature a breathtaking 1,000 boats travelling along seven miles of the River Thames and navigating 14 bridges. Once again, the Port of London Authority is at the heart of it, with two big jobs to do, ensuring the Thames is made ready and that the pageant passes off safely. No one underestimates what a huge challenge it is. Well, firstly, it's an enormous amount of work, and uh, what I'm so pleased about is that the organisation 
is rising to the challenge. It's unique. We've never done anything like this on the river before. And uh, I'm sure it's going to be a very spectacular event on the day. One of the biggest issues facing the PLA is getting the river ready. From the end of winter onwards, work was underway. Three miles of chain to provide hundreds of extra moorings for visiting boats has to be laid. A huge order was quickly put into China, as all the authorities' chain has already been used up in preparation for the Olympics. Unfortunately, we're waiting for the chain to come from China at this present moment, but more importantly, even if it comes in time, which we're hopeful it will, uh, we can't establish or lay any of these moorings until after the boat race, which is on the 7th of uh, April, because uh, we can't get involved with, them, with the rowers. Uh, but we're anticipating it will take us probably somewhere in the region of two months to put them in. And out of the 33 craft we have in the PLA approximately, we have only two of the vessels uh, that can do this particular type of work, which is the Driftwood 2, which you can see behind me now. The night before the pageant, 270 boats from around the world will gather and moor on the River Thames above Putney. And a fleet of tall ships will be mooring in the avenue of sail around Tower Bridge. Without the work of the PLA getting the moorings laid, these boats wouldn't be in place on the river for the day of the pageant. It's uh, constant at the moment. We'll be working this Saturday and Sunday and uh, into next week and then just carrying on. It's, uh, the pressure's on now with about 50 odd days to go, so we've got to make sure we do it all. But not everything runs as smoothly as the Port of London Authority would wish. At this late stage, it's decided more moorings are needed to cope with the changing numbers of boats. This has meant that um, we've had to get some extra boys in um, and some extra rings in. Now the boys are usually on a three to four week lead time and we've had four to five days. The moorings at Putney, which narrow the width of the river considerably, mean that for a few weeks rowers are unable to row through them as it's deemed unsafe by the Port of London Authority. This effectively cuts the river in half, leaving rowers very unhappy. I'm hopeful that the work we have already been doing in, in, in building a closer relationship has been enough to build up a certain amount of credit. There will be a certain amount of bridge building to go on. I'm constantly talking to people and, you know, <laughs> trying to apologise as often as I can for the disruption. The workload is so great that all leave has been cancelled at the Port of London Authority for the next three months until after this momentous event has passed safely on the 3rd of June. On the day of the pageant, 90 extra Port of London Authority staff will be on duty. I mean, we've got guys here with a lot of experience, been out in the river for many years, um, all looking forward to this day to, um, to, get, to get involved in this. It's a total one-off. It's March now, and preparations for the river are well underway. It's unthinkable to put on such a huge event without rehearsing the key players. Today it's the turn of the Royal Barge, the Spirit of Chartwell. She's rehearsing with the Port of London Authority working alongside for safety. She will be carrying the Queen, the Duke of Edinburgh and other senior royals, so there's no room for error. Are you going to do a, a thing that kind of flaps over like that? Like a, you did a to, almost like a top step that went ch chonk. We're at Cadogan Pier, uh, which is um, in Chelsea in West London. We've chosen today purely in terms of the tidal conditions to try and reflect those which are going to take place during the pageant. So it's important to get the tidal conditions right for that and also there's going to be a structure on the vessel um, as part of the sort of the dressing up of this vessel during the QDJ. So we're testing that in terms of the additional height it adds to this vessel to make sure that you know, we are comfortable with that the vessel can safely navigate through the bridges in central London. We've put a number of white poles, as you've probably seen on the vessel, um, and these replicate the actual structure which is going to be on board during the pageant. Um, so they're, they're flexible and they're soft, so we can actually undertake a trial. We can do it in a safe environment, and if, if the worst were to happen, we're only going to hit a bridge with a flexible pole, so it's not an issue. It gives us a realistic trial of what we're actually going to encounter on the day. The Royal Barge has to travel under 14 bridges, the lowest being Westminster, which all eyes were on to see if it cleared safely. It did. The safe passage of the Royal Barge is not the team's only concern. 
On pageant day, there'll be a thousand boats on a short stretch of river. It will be very crowded. If help should be needed on the barge, they'll need to be able to reach it with emergency boats. The uh, medivac patrols were really being organised by the uh, Maritime and Coast Guard Agency because if there was uh, an incident on board that uh, involved a member of the crew, staff or one of the minor passengers on board, then they'd probably try and evacuate that person as per any other vessel along the river. Basically we would want to be standing alongside on our command launch with the uh, Maritime and Coast Guard's um, on-scene coordinator. So they'd be arranging the actual search and rescue or medical evacuations and we'd need to make sure that it's a known safe vessel going into that area and we know their movement so we'd be looking at why is it going there and informing the police because this is a highly protected vessel. Essentially what we're trying to do in, in order to, to reduce the risks of the event is to make sure that every part of it we've exercised and rehearsed previously and of course it's impractical to go and do the whole thing as a rehearsal. But what we've done is we've taken each of the, 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 the various parts and, and exercised them on, on their own in many cases. We've put together bits and pieces where we can. Um, and, and this was a particularly important part because we, 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 we actually had the vessel at the Royal, will be the Royal Barge in the day. We also had to get the, the police familiar. We had to make sure that the designers could see the problem of getting the, 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 the ship sorted out to go under the bridges. So all of that came together today. And so, so everyone has now got a clear mental picture of what they need to achieve on the day. It's the end of the day, a uh, few things that we need to tidy up but it's looking very positive. Spirit Chartwell's done a very safe passage down river and it's been a very good productive rehearsal. It's April now and there are just over seven weeks to go until the Royal River pageant. The Port of London Authority is still working hard to make sure that all the plans for everyone taking part are working. You're all busy people, so we, we, we will we'll, we'll crack on. Today it's the final session after 18 months of meetings with the boat operators who run commuter and tourist boats in central London. I don't think there can be any doubt that they've covered every base. Um, everything that could have been thought of has been thought of. You know, every scenario that could happen has been covered. And this is the last meeting today of a very exhaustive, long process. So I am confident that the day is going to be absolutely superb, very well organised um, and absolutely safe for everybody. I think that the PLI have, have done well in the, the, the speed in which they initially reacted 18 months ago to this plan. I, I think it's been quite an unenviable task for them and I think they've approached it in the best manner they can. Um, and unfortunately, I think they're, 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 whatever happens, they're going to get um, condemned in some shape or form. They're in a, a no-win situation. The big concern today is making sure that every boat joins the pageant exactly on time. And the Port of London Authority is ready to make sure they do. Now, if every single passenger vessel was delayed by 30 seconds, that doesn't sound much. But if every single vessel was delayed that much, that would extend the pageant by 40 minutes. So that gives you an idea of the scale of the problem and the importance of getting boats away on time. So essentially what I'm going to do is talk through um, the safety arrangement, our roles and objectives and so on. The people who will keep everyone moving are the 100 or so marshals provided by the Port of London Authority and partner organisations to literally shepherd the pageant down the river on the day. We've never done this before. It is the biggest event that's happened on the river ever, to the best of my knowledge. We are trying to put on a huge show. Um, I'm a pilot. I drive ships. I've never done this before. So, yes, I'm nervous. With less than seven weeks to go, they are finding out what their jobs will entail and how they'll be on the river for up to 18 hours, making sure everyone is safe. Today's meeting has helped because it's clarified the... Um, the detail of that will be in the, the type of vessels that we're marshalling and where they're expecting to be and how they're going to go through the, the bridge arches and all the detail about in emergency what will, should happen and what the expectation is there, uh, which is detail that we hadn't had up to now. Ready to row, just paddling light. Are you ready? Row. Just across the way from the marshals meeting, another team from the Port of London Authority is getting ready. 
As well as organising and overseeing the pageant, the PLA has teams of rowers taking part. I think it's just going to be lovely to see all, all, the, all those boats out on the river at one time together uh, with my colleagues around me as well, so it's going to be a really special day. This is our toilet. And as ever, the PLA's preparation is thorough. No rower facing seven hours on the river is going to be caught short in the boat. <laughs> While the months and months of preparation are coming to a head, the port still continues to run as normal, despite the extra heavy workload on everyone's shoulders. Well, London is the second largest port in the UK. We have over 10,000 ships coming in and out a year, and we have organised ourselves to ensure that our, the things we are required to do day to day, we can continue to do to a very high standard. It's May. With less than a week to go before the river pageant, everyone at the Port of London Authority is putting the finishing touches to their plans for the big day. Five days before the pageant and the first of the tall ships to be moored in the avenue of sail comes in. The Belle M sails from France to meet her Port of London Authority pilot at Gravesend, who will guide her and all the other tall ships up to the Tower Bridge moorings. We have pilots here who are specialist mariners. They know the ins and outs of the River Thames, the way the channels and the tides and the currents and the wind works on the Thames. And a specialist river pilot will get on and he will guide the vessel the, the remaining miles up to the mooring just downstream of Tower Bridge. As the Belem slips through the barrier at dusk, she heads upriver into central London as a spectacular herald of the fast approaching royal pageant. It's Wednesday the 30th of May, just four days to go, and the boats are coming into London thick and fast to be met by the Port of London Authority. Can we go to midships please, and then do a five degree and then a five degree please? Midship. At West India Docks in Canary Wharf, they're being scrutineered for safety. The scrutineering is uh, a process to ensure safety critical items on the vessel are there and what the master has said is there and to correct. Safety critical items are very important. They might seem minor, but they could help assist in, a, in an event that could escalate very quickly. For instance, the correct amount of diesel or um, the anchor if needed. The Port of London Authority scrutineers have already spotted a couple of boats coming in which they think may cause a problem. There are certain things that we will be looking for. We'll be looking to make sure that the, um, the helmsman has got a clear view uh, around him and in front of him. Obviously when he's in the procession he needs to be aware of what's either side of him and ahead of him. There are a few looking around here that we're going to have to look at a bit closer but when we get there then they might be perfectly fine. Um, but we'll discuss that with the master or the owner when we get down on the boat. This is one of the largest gatherings of boats ever seen. It's a wonderful spectacle and they've travelled from around the world. Uh, my name is Ron Bird, I'm from New Zealand and I'm one of the project facilitators to bring a whole group of New Zealand youth who are uniformed youth organisation members like Sea Cadets, Sea Scouts, Young Mariners and so on to row on the pageant on the Thames on the 3rd of June. And it came about having seen Boris on our television, Boris Johnson, the Mayor of London, inviting people to come. Most have never sailed on the River Thames before, so the Port of London Authority holds full briefings for masters and crews to ensure everyone will be safe on the day. Essentially we're, we're, we're at the Hilton Hotel in West India Dock and what we're doing now is we're just having one of the final masters briefings uh, be before we, we, the pageant takes place on Sunday. At the same time that we're here, there are also briefings taking place at Upper, upper River up at Teddington and rowing clubs uh, elsewhere. So essentially these briefings are going on and it's the final bit to get everyone and make sure that they, they know what they're doing and primarily to give them a chance to ask questions. Uh, PLA have been great. I've been working quite closely with everyone for the last year or so um, and as David Phillips has said on many occasions the challenges really are going to be people needing to do what they've been told to do and of course the weather's going to be that great unknown. The London Port Authority have done a fantastic job. In, in what way? Being very considerate to narrowboats because I mean a lot of us have not done the tidal Thames very often and we do really rely on the guidance of them as an authority. It's Friday 
and there are just two days to go until the river pageant. At the Avenue of Sail by Tower Bridge, the Port of London Authority team is busy directing everyone to their correct places. Sorry, I'll step right in over the bike there, please. Boats are arriving thick and fast, trying to find their way to the moorings, laid especially for them by the Port of London Authority. Right there, Skip. You for the 12 o'clock bridge lift? OK. I'll try and get a couple of cutters up there for you. PLA boats are nipping around, helping them to tie on to their moorings. Meanwhile, the next tall ship noses her way up the Thames to join the Avenue of Sail. Matthew of Bristol, Thames Patrol Barnes. I've just dispatched two cutters over to where your mooring is, which is just ahead of the Lady of Avenal, which is the second of the two tall ships nearest to Tower Bridge. The 16th century replica Matthew from Bristol is helped onto her moorings smoothly and swiftly. The thing is, when you arrive with a ship like ours, all eyes are always on it. We can never creep in any harbour you know, under cover of darkness even, because we're such a, a sort of prominent ship. And you want to arrive and you want to look professional and you want to go, ha ha, and there's people on the shore and you want to be able to celebrate, you know, a textbook arrival. But in a place like this with the tide running and so many other boats, you, no way could you do that on your own. You've got to have good watermen and people who understand the river and good boat handlers and good line handlers to make it happen. And they did and it was brilliant. Meanwhile, the PLA are dealing with people who aren't sure where they are going. What are you bound for? Keep us close. OK, then. As preparations continue apace, a new problem has arisen. The weather. Forecasters are predicting a wet, cold and windy pageant day. If it's pouring with rain, that is not, going to, that, that is not good. Nevertheless, it's not going to stop the, the pageant. What we are concerned about is wind. There are some very lurid headlines painting a very depressing picture on, 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 on the weather. But as the Kelly's Heroes, that great film, immortalised by Donald Sutherland, where he says, I'm not having any negative waves. And that's really what we want here. The morning of the day before the pageant has dawned, wet and windy. At Teddington Lock, boat owners are getting a briefing from the Port of London Authority team. I don't see any questions anybody wants to ask. Is it through the eye or over the top of the boat? Um, it'll be through the eye. I think we're looking at about 27 boats coming out the lock now. Today, the River Thames sees an operation on a scale never before witnessed. 270 boats of all shapes and sizes and from all around the world are travelling from Teddington Lock to meet up with a flotilla coming upriver from West India Dock, all aiming to converge at Putney. The Port of London Authority is overseeing it all, from marshalling up and down the river to helping the boats get onto their individual moorings. Charlie, Commander Charlie, this is Commander Mike, over. Today, months of planning and laying of hundreds of tonnes of moorings has come to fruition. I think from our point of view we've had no problems at all and one of our concerns was of course getting them onto the moorings and that's gone really smoothly as well. This is how I'd hoped it was going to plan out today certainly and it's gone exactly to plan so I'm very pleased certainly. I did wonder what it was going to look like, obviously we've seen the moorings now for a few weeks but the boats are on now, virtually all of them are tied up now, they've all got their bunting up and they're prepared for tomorrow and it's looking great and I'm certainly quite excited now for tomorrow. Meanwhile, further upriver at Chiswick, the rowers are arriving from every corner of the country and beyond. Preparations at all levels are taking place. My name's Christine. I'm, uh, we, I live in Pembrokeshire in Wales. We were really excited to be part of something this big and, and to be part of the Jubilee. So we were really willing to come down to London and experience uh, the Thames and, and whatever tomorrow brings. This will be the 350 boat man-powered squadron which will have most of the Port of London Authority's marshals keeping it in line. As celebrity rowers mix with the others, the energetic briefing from the Port of London Authority Harbour Master is unequivocal. Every person in this event is in my ridiculously large amount of paper that I'm trying to remember. And you all have a specific time where you have to be. You all have a specific time to be on the water. The front of the fleet is seven minutes ahead of the back of the fleet and that is never going to change. If you find yourself eight minutes behind the front of the fleet, it is because you are being towed, okay? <laughs> and you're being towed 
in front of three and a half million people. <laughs> Sorry, three and a half billion. I think the briefing was really good. It reiterated the key points from the lots of information that we've been sent out. Um, so it made us really think about what was needed. I think the message was safety first um, with everybody and um, just ensuring that everyone works together and keeps it a good friendly atmosphere because there's going to be a lot of people watching us tomorrow. The weather is now of such a concern, the rowers who will lead the pageant are facing an uncertain future. The wind is the problem. What Met Office are forecasting gusts of up to 20 knots. That will cause us some problems. Some of the small uh, rowing boats that you can see behind me, they won't be able to maintain the speed. So it's going to be a bit of a tough call early on, um, which I would not want to make. As night falls, it's just a few hours before the Port of London Authority Marshals will be back at their base at the Thames Barrier for the start of a very long and very important day. It's 5am on the day of the Royal Pageant. The Port of London Authority Marshals are starting their shift. There will be almost 100 on the water today, aboard 30 boats. Yeah, we just arrived at Barry Gardens Pier at this ungodly hour in the morning. The weather's not looking very pleasant, but uh, the boats are all up and running and the crew's got the, the vessel ship shape and ready to sail this morning, so it's as set as we can ever be. Everything's in place and uh, everything's uh, ready to rock and roll, so it's all stations go this morning. Boats are loaded with provisions for a very long day on the water. Many won't be finishing back here until almost midnight. By then, everyone will know if all the planning has paid off. We have done all the preparation. As I said, the moorings have all went in and a little bit nervous because it's going to be a long day, but all the hard work we've done previous to this, so hopefully it will pay off with the results today. At 6am, the Chief Harbour Master gets ready to leave for final checks ahead of the pageant. A mix of feelings, really. Um, quite sort of apprehensive. Uh, of course, because of, cause, cause this is a, a step into the unknown, but also quietly confident. I'm looking forward to the start, because once the start has happened, there's, there's, there's the, uh, all, all we can do then is monitor it and try and keep it together and on track. The annual test closure of the Thames Barrier today means the river isn't running as fast, and so it's safer for all the boats taking part. Upriver, where 270 boats are tied up on the specially laid moorings near Putney, the Port of London Authority is making final checks on everyone's boats. We're making sure that um, the POB is correct, that they've applied for the right amount of people who are on board, who say they're on board, that the master hasn't been drinking, um, that the vessel is ready to go. Then we give them the pennant. The pennant is to make sure that they, they are been accredited to join in the pageant and that they've been approved to join the pageant. The flag will identify the vessels that have gone through the correct procedure. The rowers at Chiswick are in high spirits as the weather is dry and the wind has dropped. All the boats are also getting the once over by the Port of London Authority. Yep, no, yep. life jackets, blue wristbands, all good. Uh, finished with the crew now. Back at the Thames Barrier, it's almost time. But there are last minute problems to address. If it is a tidal wave, then you'll have to let them down and put safety boats ahead to ensure that their way is clear. Essentially what happened uh, was a timing issue. We had the, um, the water taxi service was, was, was delayed a bit. Uh, we had the rowers coming down and we had the Dutch barges with, with not quite enough water. Uh, so what we've done is, is we, we tried to hold the rowers back but, but that wasn't possible. Uh, we managed to get the water taxi service finished just in time. Everything is ready to go now. So at just before a quarter past two, the pageant commander gives the five-minute warning from Thames Barrier Navigational Control, which will be the nerve centre of the pageant. Final checks are made. 15 seconds. And then the Queen's Diamond Jubilee River pageant of a thousand boats begins. Start. Jubilee pageant is underway and making way. At the head of the pageant with the Royal Barge, the 
Gloriana is the Port of London Authority's launch Richmond, setting the pace for the entire procession. Throughout the seven-mile pageant, the Port of London Authority's boats remain alongside, marshalling everyone to stay safe. The event is continually overseen by the Port of London Authority's control centre at the Thames Barrier. Back at the Thames Barrier, the Port of London Authority's pageant commander, David Phillips, is frustrated by a boat travelling too fast. This is pageant commander, you maintain speed as required and head straight to Greenwich Pier and maintain the pace. Over. This is pageant commander, this is the second infraction today. It's going to be the last. Out. Probably six years up and, you know, there's been smaller pageants, but um, no, nothing in that scale. And, yeah, it's wonderful. As the Queen passes under Tower Bridge, the pageant is hailed a success. However, for the remaining boats on the Thames, there is up to another four miles to travel before they can stop, and the rain is now coming down hard and fast. This is a serious problem for the rowers, who've already finished. Cheerful despite being soaked through and freezing cold, they now await the lock gates that will open to let them into the docks where they'll disembark. We had always imagined that the dispersal phase would be the most difficult phase of all. And essentially that's why we had the number of boats in place that we have. We're moving some upriver to take, to reduce the pressure still further. Uh, and, and I'm also trying to, to reduce my team, some of whom have been in open boats in these conditions since five o'clock this morning. At Greenwich, the Port of London Authority rowing crew finally makes it back. It's so, so lovely to see so many people out cheering us on and saw the Queen and the Royal Party. It's absolutely wonderful. Fabulous day. For 1,000 boats, 3 billion viewers around the world, the greatest spectacle the River Thames has ever seen is finally over. I would summarise the day as, as, as a great success. Uh, the pageant itself, given the conditions, went better than I had expected, better than I had ever expected. Uh, and indeed, the, what we achieved in terms of the overall delay of a little over 35 minutes was what I would have expected under perfect weather conditions. That we managed to keep the delay to that under the conditions we had was really remarkable. Long after everyone has gone home, the Port of London Authority crews make their way back to Barrier Garden Pier for the end of their shift, almost 20 hours after they set out. There's been tremendous teamwork. I mean, we've had the, the guys working in the uh, Thames Barrier Navigation Control overseeing the whole operations. We've had the skippers on the boat. We've had over 100 people working on our launches, 30 boats out there marshalling this event, but all working together um, all working with the participants as well and they're really enthusiastic about this event this is their way of paying tribute to the Queen um, and everybody's done a tremendous job it was long <laughs> it was good though good good. Guy, yeah. very good yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's and, nice to see the Queen yeah highlights it's nice to just see the amount of people up there really thousands all upon that. thousands upon thousands standing beside it's very good nice very patriotic yeah brilliant don't be bashed into each other Everything went well, all good. Everyone happy. Marvellous. Time to go home. I thought it could have been a lot worse than it was because there's a lot of boats out there isn't it, to try and handle. And yeah, it was good. I mean, thoroughly enjoyed the day, actually. Mm. Just a bit tired and a bit wet now. Yeah. <laughs> it's been, been a long day, but thoroughly enjoyable. Very good. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was glad we were involved with it. Yeah, it really was. It was a really good day. Yeah. It was. Yeah. Weather could have been brighter, but other than that, yeah. <laughs> superb. We could have done with a bit of sun. Yes. Yeah. Better than you expected? Oh, yeah, a lot yes, better. Much better. Yes. Yeah, much better. Everybody, everybody did their bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was great. So, from here to there, away from the Her Majesty, <coughs> give her a wave. Yeah. It's lovely. Yeah. <laughs> you see the Queen, and yes. it was like 100 yards, like 50 yards away from the Queen. It was terrific. Everything, they was happy, they was all waving and cheering, so it was good.
Craig, good crowd. Oh, apart from the wet and yeah. bad back. <laughs> no, no, it's good. It, it's a good day out, yeah. Apart from getting pneumonia now. <laughs> but we'll be great. <laughs> really good experience. What chance of a lifetime, really. Just be uh, honoured to be part of it. It's the morning after the night before, and the dispersal operation is well underway. Today, the job is to start getting everyone off moorings and safely heading home. Well, we're in West India Docks on the Isle of Dogs. Um, West India Docks has played a role as the mustering point for a lot of the vessels within the pageant. So we've had the Dunkirk little ship, the historic vessels, the recreational motorboats, and the uh, narrowboats and Dutch barges have been in here as well. It's, it's a week-long event for us. It started on Wednesday of last week um, and won't be finished till the final vessels leave on, on Tuesday. So uh, all of our staff have worked exceptionally hard here. The rain has stopped and everyone is preparing to leave after one of the biggest days of marriage maritime pageantry in London's history. The dock is filling up. The pageant was the most wonderful experience I think any of us have been in. We had uh, dealings with the Port, port Authority, they were very professional, very good, very helpful. Um, they were there when we, we needed help and advice um, and we, we found them to be very good. One of the key organisers of the event for the Port of London Authority can finally take a moment to reflect. I think the PLA feels that this was a remarkable achievement, something that we never imagined would have been as successful as it was. We got everyone away, everyone was safe, um, and it was a fantastic thing to be involved with. Um, if someone ever asked me to do it again, it would be a no, <laughs> but um, really fantastic to be involved with it. It might have been cold, wet, but we got there. We got home, everyone was safe. Everyone is leaving or getting ready to leave, but the Port of London Authority's work is far from finished. Its team is busy helping these magnificent ships out of the avenue of sail to begin their journey down the Thames. Today well, we're just sort of tidying up now and, and getting the avenue of sail um, away from their moorings and and out into their, their relevant places. A lot are going to West India Dock and, and some are going out of the Thames and on to their destinations. The challenge they offer us is uh, traffic control. It's, many, it's keeping everybody out of their way, giving them a, a clear span when they, when they leave their moorings and swing round and, and head out. Yeah, so basically we're just trying to keep everyone there out of the way of the vessels. This unprecedented gathering of boats from around the globe is gently dispersing and heading home. The Port of London Authority is working to make their departure as smooth as possible. At the Thames Barrier Navigational Control, they are preparing for all the ships leaving today. The man with overall control of the PLA during the pageant has barely left his post since yesterday morning. Yesterday I felt the proudest I have ever been in my life for, for, for the, the effort that was put in by people. Um, from all parts of the PLA, but of course I must put a special word out for our operational and afloat teams, many of whom um, turned to to work yesterday having only had a very few hours sleep on the Saturday night. Many were out in open boats um, all day from 5 o'clock in the morning until um, 11 o'clock at night. Um, a number of them had been cold and wet twice because having changed into dry clothing they went out again. Um, and they, they did it with all tremendous fortitude and stoicism. And uh, in the immediate aftermath of the pageant, once uh, everyone had finished and the Queen had left, that was when our work really started. Um, and, and they responded magnificently. And so, the first of many of the boats and ships that travel to the capital to celebrate the Queen's Diamond Jubilee slips down the river on the tide. The pageant has been crowned a success. The Port of London Authority team tirelessly and expertly played no small role in that. Meanwhile, the second biggest port in Britain continues to operate just as normal.